Well, hello everybody. My name's Gordon Henderson, and I used to be an artisan baker. Well, I still am an artisan baker, but you know, I used to do it and get money for it and sell things. But I don't really do that anymore. I just have a little bit of fun doing some other things. But um, today, I'm baking bread, baking it in our ever hot over there. Or rather, I should say, I've baked it in the ever hot. But um, I'm going to take you through the process in a few minutes. This is simple bread. It's, it's bread with a slight engineering um, angle to it because I'm really an engineer. We're going to weigh things properly and we're going to cook and we're going to um, enjoy it, hopefully. Um, it's not difficult. It'll take, I don't know, maybe three, three and a half hours of your time at most. If you don't have an ever hot and you've just got something else, that's fine. It's just an oven at the end of the day. All you need is a hot oven. Um, this, the way that I make it, I start off at 250 degrees C. Cools down a little bit after a while. If you've got a fan oven, great. Set it about the same. If you've got some other type of cooker, it'll work. Just set it hot and let it go cooler. It's not going to be a problem. It's going to be easy to make and it's going to taste delicious. I've already had some. I'm going to have some more. But, you don't want to see me eating bread, you want to crack on and make some yourself. So, let's wind back in time, come back to when I started this, and let's see how it was done. Nice and easy. Have fun. Okay, here we are. Um, come back in time, and we're going to start making our lovely bread. So we're going to start, I've measured everything out. Dead handy thing, shower cap. Next time you go in a hotel, whenever, grab, grab the shower caps because they're really useful and they're reusable, better than cling film at the end of the day. So I've pre-weighed and pre-weighed everything, mixed everything. Digital scales, because we're engineers and we're going to do things digitally, we're going to work in kilograms and grams rather than any other units. I've pre-weighed the flour. Now we're going to make two loaves, so what I've got in here is 900 grams of strong white bread flour and 200 grams of wholemeal bread flour. I'm using organic flours, um, Dove's Farm and Scotland the Bread flour. That's what I've got, that's what I like. Um, I'm also using dried yeast, it's also Dove's Farm yeast. I tend to buy it in big packets like that, weigh it out. If you're buying it in sachets, the sachets are usually seven grams per sachet, so it'll be two sachets. So in here, we've got 14 grams of yeast, and in here we've got 20 grams of salt, that's 10 grams of salt per loaf. I've also got um, the end of a couple of bags of um, sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds that I'm just going to throw in the mix at the same time. Water, I've weighed out the water, I can't remember off the top of my head how much water, but I did weigh it out and I put it um, in. So, um, useful little tip. Here's our, uh, the professor here. If your water is really cold, stick it on the back for half an hour. You want it at room temperature water. It's autumn here in uh, the Scottish borders. Water comes out the taps a little bit on the chilly side. So let's get down. Rings off somewhere safely. Only because the dough gets stuck underneath your ring. So mix our flowers together, two different types of flour. Why two different types of flour? A little bit of wholemeal makes it taste nice. Adds to the flavour, adds a little bit of texture. Um, salt and sugar in. Together. Mix that in. Doesn't matter if you mix the salt on top of the yeast. Uh, I said salt and sugar, salt and yeast. Doesn't matter if you um, put the two together. They're dry. Really doesn't matter. And I'll just throw these in. I didn't weigh them, it was just the end of the packet, so there we go. We're using our hand. We're not using a, a mixer. We're not going to do anything with a mixer at the moment. 
another thing about the um, about weighing everything, there is the scale there. I've just remembered how much water. 715 grams of water. The scale says 750, but the um, my little digital scales said 715. So we just add all that in. Now mixing hand. One hand in, one hand dry. If you always have a dry hand, and somebody rings the doorbell, you can go and answer the door. But in into the centre, outside to the centre, turn the bowl, pretend you're a food mixer. If you've got a mixer with a dough hook, stick it in the mixer. But actually, one more thing will wash out, isn't it? So what I'm now doing is I'm beginning to crush it. So lift it and then crush it. That's all I'm doing. I've got a little bit more water here, just in case it's a little bit too dry. You don't want it super sloppy, but you really don't want it super dry either. So this is quite dry. And it's quite sloppity. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water. Not much. Now a couple of other bits of equipment that are uh, uh, handy, not essential. Plastic dough scraper. These come in all shapes and sizes. I'm just going to scrape it off my fingers to um, get a bit more in. Now make sure you go right down to the bottom of the bowl because you don't want any dried flour lurking at the bottom of the bowl. Um, other dough scrapers, there's a small one. Our uh, bench knife is a metal one, we'll probably use that later. The hand at a half, not essential. A little bit more water. So what we're aiming for, and we're not kneading at this stage by the way, this is a, <laughs> this is an easy bread method. It's not a complete no knead bread, but it's, a, it's an easy, Easy bread method. So we just want a big sticky shaggy mess. Pull it from the outside, punch it into the middle, give it a bit of a squeeze through your fingers, scrape down the sides of the bowl, use your scraper to clean the stickiness off your hands. There's a bit of flour on the bench. Put that back in. Let's just mix that in. The sides of the bowl are quite sticky. If you want to, you can just get a tiny bit of flour. And we're only talking about a teaspoon, not, nothing more than a teaspoon. And just rub it around the, the sides of the bowl. Dry it off. You don't have to. This is all about mixing the flour and the water together, and the yeast and the uh, salt. You know, one nice big homogenised lump. Right, what do we do now? Tradition would have it that we tip it out on the bench and start kneading. Engineer says that's not necessary. Engineer says that's what your granny used to do. This is what I do. So what I do is I leave it. I'm going to leave it for half an hour. I'm going to put this on it, stop it drying out unnecessarily. I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to come back in half an hour's time and we'll see what happens. So bear with me, set a timer and come back in half an hour's time. Okay. Welcome back. Our half hour is up, maybe a little bit over half an hour. So I'm going to show you what's happened. Our uh, dough has just been sitting here on the bench. It hasn't really risen because it's risen a little bit, not, not a lot. What we're um, waiting and what we've seen now is that we get a nice stretchy, sticky mess. 
whereas before it would just break and tear off. Now it's gone a little bit stretchy. Now I didn't say this was a no knead net bread, I said it was a little knead bread. So what we're going to do now is we're going to knead it, but only just a little bit because really, anyway, we use a scraper. If you've got a spatula or something, anything with a bit of a curved edge, just to help you take it out. And we're just going to tip it out onto the bench. Get everything out you can. Not that critical. And straight edge of the scraper now. I'm actually going to use my metal one because I prefer using a metal one, but um, anything you want. Know, the, the, the trick now is to just we want to give it a little bit of a stretch, a little bit of a, a fold, just to sort of try and tighten the dough up a little bit. So we could start off just by lifting it and turning it. And you can do this in the bowl. There's lots of videos online, people doing exactly this in the bowl. I like to, to do small loads like this on the bench. Now, kneading, I'm going to use my thumbs and the, the base of my thumbs there. And I'm just going to Push it away, fold it back, push it away, fold it back, push it away, fold it back, push it fold, and then turn it round. And very quickly, now this is a surface, so it's kind of sticking to it. If you've got a, a nice sort of plastic or marble or quartz or whatever work surface, then use that. But really, we're only going to do this for a couple of minutes, if that. And I would just scrape it towards myself. Bring it back into the bowl. That's it. Back in there. We're going to put its little hat on. Now I'm going to leave that to rise. We're going to leave it about three quarters of an hour. We're going to come back in three quarters of an hour and see what it looks like. If it's a little bit cool, you might need to leave it. Even, though, even up to an hour and a quarter, if it's really cold, an hour and a half. All we're looking for is for that to have risen approximately doubled in size. It's not, a, it's not an exact thing here, although we're engineers, we're not working to an exact thing for this bread. This is going to be good bread, bread that you've made yourself. You might not win an award with it, but it's going to be good enough. Um, we can leave it here, we leave it in a warm place if you are a little bit cool. Well, we've got this lovely warm weather hot behind us. So I'll put it on the professor, that's the uh, induction side, so there's not, no heat under there other than the heat that's coming off the, uh, the hot plate side. So it's, uh, it's not going to cook it, it's not going to get it overly warm, overly hot, anything. So I'm going to leave it there. We'll come back in three quarters of an hour and see what it looks like. Fries. Hello, we're back. It's been uh, about 50 minutes later. We've got... A monster that's alive. Have a look at that. So there's a big puffy ball of sticky dough. So there's enough there for two loaves and so what we're going to do is we're going to divide it in two. We're engineers. Got my dough. Scraper, bench knife, whatever you want to call it. Scales. If you've got digital scales but when you weigh something on and you take something off and it goes negative, then here's a wee trick for you. Dough plus bowl. We could just tip it out and divide it in two, but we're engineers. Dough plus bowl on scales. Hit the zero button, the tear button, whatever your scales might call that button. Taking it off the scales, I've got negative 
2402. So negative 2.4 kilos. Tip the dough out as much as you can when you're doing this for money, as I did for five years. That's your profit. Put the bowl back on the scales. So what you now have is you've got the weight of the bowl minus the weight of the dough. So you've actually got the weight of the dough on the scales. So this is 1975. We can divide 1975 by two and get um, 960 approximately. Good enough. Good enough for baking, not good enough for a true engineer or a true scientist, but um, it's good enough. So we can do what we're going to do, which is basically cut it in half, put it on the scales. This is very sticky dough. 940, 960. That'll do. Now, one of the reasons this is sticky is because I've been speaking to a friend of mine about this. This flour. This stuff. This is Scotland, the. Uh, Scotland the bread flour. It's the first time that I've used it, but a friend of mine has been using it for quite some time. And he says, yeah, it's sticky. It's stickier than, uh, than most whole mills that he's used. So all I'm doing now is um, what we call pre-shaping. So I'm moving it around the table I'm just tucking in the, the end here, turning it, tucking it, turning it, sliding it, turning it. And there we go. So we've just tightened up the, uh, the skin, the gluten that's on the skin. That's nice and tight. It's holding its shape. We could just leave those for half an hour and throw them in the oven. That would bake bread. But what we're going to do is we're going to shape it a little. We're going to use these baskets, bannetons. Um, as we call them. And these will just help the dough hold its shape and hold it build. If you've got um, loaf tins, these would fit into a two pound loaf tin, an old fashioned two pound loaf tin, be a, a new fashioned one kilo loaf tin or thereabouts. Um, you could shake them and have them freestanding. I wouldn't recommend that um, if you're just starting out. If you are going to do that, use a little bit less water in the dough. That'll help it keep its shape. Um, it'll make a slightly denser bread, but it'll help it keep its shape. But we're going to use these baskets because because I've got them basically. I'm just letting those rest for a few minutes. We've we've kind of played with them. The gluten's kind of a, kind of a bit tight, so we want to actually stretch them out a little bit, reshape them into a nice roll, and put them in these baskets. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about the cooker. This is our ever hot. Now, if you've got an Everhot, great, fantastic, because that's what I've got. If you haven't got an Everhot, it's just a cooker. Look, don't, don't let the fact that it's a range cooker, that it's some sort of, you know, big cooker with great big hot ovens put you off. It's just a cooker, it's just an oven. But we're going to need a few things before we put our things in the oven. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bread, so I'm going to take them out onto this tray. This is a piece of silicon, I don't know what it's called. I know that Bakelglide is a commercial brand, but this is, I don't, I don't think this is silicon. I, this, I've had this for years. This stuff is, is infinitely reusable, almost. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tin in the oven so that the tin heats up and the base is already hot, so we don't have to wait for heat to come through to the base of the oven. Um, I'll need to move the shelf. I'm gonna take that out and I'll show you why in a few minutes. There we go. Right, so there's a shelf that my baking tray is gonna sit on. Plenty of room above it to rise. So I will need to take that out. I'm also gonna put another little baking tray. 
And this is going to go in the bottom of the oven. Just like that. So when I take the tray out, load the breads onto the tray, tip them out of the, uh, the baskets, back in the oven, I'm going to put some hot water in the bottom of the tray. It doesn't have to be hot, it makes it a bit easier. And that's going to generate a bit of steam in the oven. But I want my oven to be hot, so I'm going to make sure we're on 225 at the moment. And it's out to 250. So that'll give me a nice hot oven. 250 degrees. We'll turn it down a little bit once we've loaded the uh, the breads into it. But now we're gonna get the bread in the baskets. And this is where we're gonna put a little bit of flour down on the bench. Up to now, no flour because we don't really need it. But now we're gonna make our life a little bit easier. A little bit of flour, a little bit of flour on top. A little bit of flour in these baskets as well, just help it not stick. That's all we need. We don't need a lot. So, nice and easy. Take a lump of dough, turn it upside down, and we're just going to gently stretch it out, pat it out gently, knock out some of the gas that's inside it, the carbon dioxide. And so the idea is that we just shape it, we give it a little bit of structure, a little bit of tension, nothing more than that. So, take the top, stretch it out, bring it down to the middle. We should, we should be free to, to move on the bench there, a tiny, tiny bit of flour. Take one side, fold it over, take the other side, fold it over. You get a roughly sort of triangle shape, shaped thing, you can take this side, fold it in, take that side, fold it in. And now, we're just going to roll it down from the top and as we roll it, we're going to stretch it forward, a bit like the kneading action that we did earlier. And what we're doing is we're tightening up, tightening up the sides, tightening up there, and then we've got a nice, nice little log. There we go. That can go in. Now, we put it in the basket, the seam side up. That's because when we tip it out the basket, that's going to go down the bottom and we're going to have a nice smooth side on the top. So, number two, same again. Just gently sort of stretch it out into a sort of rough, sort of rectangular, square shape. Top, down to about, just off the bottom there. Bring one side over, bring the other side over. Gently just tap it down, I'm not thumping it, I'm not whacking it, I'm just gently tapping it down. Another side in, at the bottom, and then we can pick it up and we can give it a gentle, gentle stretch and roll as we bring it over. And just roll the sides in like that. And there we go, that's it. That's all we need to do in the baskets. Now the baskets, I'm going to cover these with a, a tea towel. I'm, going to, I'm just going to leave them on the bench here. I'm not going to put them over in the cooker. I don't really want to, to speed the process up too much. The dough is, it's sort of room, room temperature. It's okay. Um, in essence, the longer you can make it rise, the better it'll taste. You could actually put these in your fridge at the, at the moment and bake them tomorrow morning if you wanted. If your fridge has got a dehumidifier function, you want to put them inside a bag. Otherwise, they'll dry out and you'll get a hard skin on the uh, on the outside and that won't be good. That'll crack when you come to, to bake it. But for today, we're just going to leave these on, on the bench. I'm going to come back in half an hour and check them. And if I think they've risen enough, I'll bake them. If I think they've um, this got a wee bit more to go, I'll leave them another 10 minutes. And I'll check every sort of five, 10 minutes after that first half hour just to make sure that they're not going to go too quickly. So, all I'm going to do now, cover them with a wee towel, just to help stop, keep a little sort of microclimate going inside there. I don't need to do anything. For the length of time that we're doing here, half an hour, three quarters of an hour, that's fine. If it's any longer, I would be looking to put them inside a plastic bag. Um, if it's really cold in your kitchen, We've got the Everhot. 
And this is a 100i. It's got a third oven, which is not heated, but actually in there, it makes a great little proofing oven. So it's a bit smaller than the main oven, so you have to be careful what you put inside it. But you've actually got a built-in, for completely free, proofing oven inside your Everhall. But this is going to do us for now because the kitchen's not too cold today. I'm in a t-shirt, so you can see that. Anyway, I shall see you in half an hour's time once these have had a wee chance to rise. Right, here we are. Um, we're getting there, almost done. Our breads have risen. Been just over half an hour, it's uh, about close on to 40 minutes. They're quite quite well risen as you can see. Um, how do we test? How do we know that they're that they're ready? I experience tells me these are ready, but take a little bit of flour, tiny wee bit of flour, and this is just to help stop your fingers sticking. Poke in and then come out again. Poke in and then come out again. Now what you're looking for is the little indent that you've just made to come out about halfway within, you know, sort of five to ten seconds. If it goes in and stays in and the whole thing goes bluch, it's overproofed. If it bounces straight back out again, it's underproofed, so you've got to leave it a little bit more. So these have gone in, come back out, <coughs> so it's about right. And excuse the noise from the small dog in the background. So, I'm going to get the tray out with oven gloves, because the tray is hot. Nope. It's okay there. I'm just going to take my gloves off a second, remembering that this is hot. And I'm just going to... There we go. One out. This is going to be a bit tight, actually. Never mind. Two out. That'll do. Knife. Nice, sharp, sharp knife. I've got a razor blade here. I'm just going to make some slashes over it. A bit of a sharp knife, use scissors. Back into our oven. This is just off the boil. There we go. So the steam is going to help to keep the outside crust a little bit soft for the first uh, sort of 10 minutes or so. And then uh, we'll take the thing out after 10 minutes, well maybe about 12 minutes. Um, so 12 minutes on the timer. We'll come back, we'll open the oven door, we'll take the steam out, we'll turn the temperature down a little bit, it will have dropped a few degrees anyway. But I'll recap, the oven's at 250, it's right up to, to full temperature. We're going to turn it down to about 230 in about 12 minutes time. And I'll see you then. Right, that's uh, 12 minutes later. I'm going to have a quick peek inside the oven. Take out the, uh, the water tray, the steam tray, because it's done its thing. My glasses have immediately steamed up. <laughs> They're baking well. They're burst, bursting out a little bit at the sides because I'd underestimated the size of that tray. I've got another baking tray, which is actually slightly bigger, which is the one I probably should have used. Never mind. Um, I'm going to turn the oven down uh, to about 230. So I quick check by pushing both buttons at the same time and it had gone from 250 down to about 245 which is sort of what I'd expect when you load it up and we've thrown a whole load of steam into the oven. So I've now turned it down to 230. Basically it's not going to cool down and it doesn't have to cool down but we're just going to let it cool itself down to 230 gradually over the next 21-22 uh, minutes which is what I'm going to set a timer for. 21 minutes because I've got it prepared on my phone already. And then we'll come back and have a look at the, the bread. See if they're cooked. They probably will be. That's um, my usual bake, bake time. It's about 12 minutes. And then uh, take the tray out, let the steam out. 
and then the, the final bake is for another 21 to 25 minutes or so. So the total bake time is about 30 to 35 minutes. Not very long at all. Nice hot oven helps. Um, place is already smelling really, really good, I can tell you that now. Um, a little note if you're using bannetons like these, just leave them on top somewhere warm so they can dry out because they will have absorbed a little bit of moisture out of the, uh, the dough and we want to make sure that they're completely dry before we put them away because anything damp with flour on it isn't going to end up looking very nice at all. Although these ones are quite nice because we can remove the liners and stick the liners in the washing machine if you want to. Right, I shall see you in a wee while when we come out and um, have a look at them out of the oven. Okay, here we are. The moment of truth. It's coming out of the oven. Oh, hot, steamy, steamy oven. Hear that nice hollow sound? And uh, yeah, so as you can see, it was just too close. So these have uh, kissed together, but that's not not going to be a problem. We're not going to win awards with this bread. But I am going to leave it here. This is a rack out of the um, the roasting tin that came with the Everhot, by the way. It makes a handy cooling rack. This is of course still hot, so I'm going to get that out of the way over there. So, good bread, there's no, no big splits around the side. It's a little bit misshapen, but as I said, <laughs> it was my own fault for using a, uh, a tray. Look, see what you get with these things here is you get tiny little bits of um, mm, bread that you can just taste like that. So, mm, tastes fine. We'll cut into one of these in a few minutes. Um, your granny would tell you that hot bread is bad for you. That's nonsense. <laughs> However, if you can leave bread to cool down before you cut into it, it will last longer. Because if I cut into that now, there's, there's a lot of hot, um, hot steam inside and it's going to come out and basically it'll come out and it'll just dry it out a little bit more. It won't necessarily go stale. Staling is, is slightly different from going dry, but it will make it go a little bit drier. But you know what, dry toast, uh, dry bread makes great toast. So. Okay. We've had it about 15 minutes out of the oven. I can bear it no longer. The uh, place is just smelling far, far too good. Let's have a look. Knife. Bread. Cut. Oh. Bread's still too hot. Far too good. It's still, um, it's lovely. I mean, look, look at that. It's nice, nice and just. Soft and spongy, not quite white because there's a little bit of wholemeal in it. There's a few seeds in it as well. And now there's going to be some butter on it. And you're going to watch the dubious um, pleasure of me eating this. Oh, come on, butter straight out of the fridge. Is it edible? Hmm. Okay, quick recap. Bread, flour, water, salt, yeast. Got two different types of flours in there and a little bit extra sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds just to give it a little bit of colour, a little bit of extra flavour, a bit of texture. Other than that, 
that was it and that's the whole process nothing else you don't need anything else get good quality flour if you want if that's your thing organic if that's your thing it is mine and um off you go just do it it's uh, it's not difficult you don't need to knead for hours and hours and hours you don't need to um you think you need a little bit of equipment but you can do it without but i'd say if you want to make some good bread give it a go feed yourself have fun